Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we're back. Season two, Private Talk. Today, we have the pleasure of having Amani Jackson. Thank you for coming on Private Talk Couch today. I appreciate you taking the time. I know that you're busy, you know, CEO of your own Lush Lush LA. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. For sure. So tell us about your entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. How you're already a CEO of a beauty company, Lush Lush. Tell us how that all started. So honestly, I went to this like a forum type of thing with my friend and um, basically it was just talking about like just not being scared and just going for things that you want to do in life, you know, because like life is short, et cetera. And it was like an eight hour like seminar. And after I left there, literally walking out of the building, my friend Joe texts me and she's like, um, one of my friends is in town for a lash tour. Like you should take the class with me. Like it's only X amount of money. Like we should do it. We can get certified. And I was like, sure. Like why not? You know, because I just left that like about like just doing what you want to do, you know? So I was like, why not just try it? So I tried it and I literally loved it so much. Like as I was doing it, like it's so tedious, but like it felt therapeutic, you know? So you had never wanted to do it before? Had you done it yourself and you just never. liked it? It just was something completely brand new and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to try it. Let's just dive in. Yeah. New business, let's go. Kind of, yeah. Like, I mean, I have gotten my lashes done probably like for four years now. So I am, I've always had extensions, but I never... It never crossed my mind to start my own business, you know, but I should have because I was always like, like telling my lash tech, like, you didn't do it right. Da, 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 da. Even though I didn't know anything about it. I'm just like, you just knew what you liked. Yeah. You knew like, you know, if you had that eye. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it was just meant to be when she told me, like, you should do the class with me. So I was like, but I did it. And like I said, I loved it. And then I went, got a business license and like opened it all proper and I've been going like ever since I opened it like publicly in February. I was doing like my family and friends up until then. And then in February, I started doing like people. On and how old are you? 22. That's awesome to be 22 and already starting your own, you know, starting your own business and doing all those things. How exciting was that for your family? My mom was super excited. It's just me, my mom and my sister. Um, but they're super excited for me because like they've always known that I was like a go getter. So they were like happy that I was able to like find like one of my passions early you know so do you just have your own store you do it all yourself tell us more about what you get to do if we go if I want to get my lashes in, are you going to do it for me do you have people that are doing it for you no so like all my clients like want me to do it like I've thought about like hiring people onto the team because like I do have like a lot of clientele but all my girls like only want me to do it so literally like I just have to space everybody out and yeah, busy you, woman. What else did you say? What else did busy you woman. I just asked if you had like actual like building. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you know, so, is it company? Do you, do you is it all mobile? Yeah. So it's like I go to everybody's houses. I do house calls only because yeah, I just haven't opened a store yet. So how many clients are you seeing a day? Probably like four, but they, it's like two hours each, and then plus travel time. You know, like driving to each and every person's house, and they don't live close. <laughs> but, it's LA. You're always in your car, no matter mm -hmm. if it's like two miles. Or <laughs> Literally like, and then you miss an exit and then it adds another like 30 minutes. <laughs> so lash life is all for you. You love it. Is, do you see it. anything expanding with it? Do you, where do you see the direction of your company? Um, so actually right now I am um, in the process of um, putting together classes because um, I have a few clients who are interested in getting trained. And so I am like putting together a training manual and like everything, their kits and stuff so I can certify them. What all does it go into to do the training to get your actual li lash license? Is it the hours? So, How many? Yeah, so it's like a 13 hour class. And um, basically, like, I'm teaching them like about the eyes and about like sanitation and like the products you should use and like tips on like how to create the fans and like everything. And then I'm also gonna tell them like give them Instagram tips on how to start their business on. Instagram because I have a friend and she recently started a business and like she really didn't know anything about like starting her stuff like on Instagram so and I felt like it was like kind of common sense but it might not be to everybody so I'm gonna also include that in the class that's awesome you know women empowerment too you know a lot of people in that you know industry beauty industry it's such a yeah. big business people you know don't feel like that there's enough room for everybody but there really yeah, is there you know? really is like there's so much money in this world, so it's just like you have to just get up and find your way to make it because it's not just going to get handed to you, like, at all. 
Facts. So what is your dating status? You're a busy woman. You're going from client to client. When do you have time to date? Mm, I don't. <laughs> so are you single? Yeah, I'm single. I'm is that just because of COVID times? Is it because it's your choice? Honestly, like, guys just play way too much. And like you said, like, I'm so busy. So it's like I don't have time for it. And, like, I'm a very, like, serious person when it comes to talking to someone. So it's like I don't have You're time. You're loyal. To, yeah, I don't have time to, like, talk to you and then have you like halfway responding or seeing me like once every two weeks like I like that's just weird you know like so I'm sure you have multiple celebrities sliding through your dms <laughs> is this why you're, you're caught up in these people telling you and gaslighting you ma'am <laughs> maybe I don't know <laughs> I don't know you're not <laughs> I want the truth <laughs> don't be shy so it's a possibility yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. So did you, have you ever found somebody like dating wise on the internet that maybe was like a fan of your lash line or anything like that, that you got to like, you know, because nowadays it's either dating apps or, you know, social media is really big for you, not even for companies, but for, you know, individuals mm -hmm. themselves. It's like the new dating app of things. So is regular guys have chances to slide in your DM and uh, see if they can take you out on a date? Um... I mean, I don't have anything against regular guys, but I mean, as long as you have your shit together, you know, like you have to come with the table too. Like you can't just be. You're a boss bitch already. So it's like, you have to have equal to me or like give me or something. Or you know, so I can be motivated, you know, like I don't want someone to have to take care of or like teach how to be a boss. Like you need, like we need to be teaching each other, like bouncing off of each other, you know? So it doesn't really matter if you're famous. Or you're 22, so you're, you know the partner things. It's so it's gonna take some time because I feel like most 20, I mean, unless you're going the older route of men, because young guys, I feel like they don't know what the fuck they want. They don't. We I barely don't. know what we want. You know what I mean? I'm 35 Seriously. and I really don't know what I want from time to time. <laughs> yeah. And I, just, you know, it's not easy. You know what I mean? And finding someone with equal interest as yourself, like you said, building with each other, building each other up, and like yeah, it comes like unless you just get that energetic bond it happens sometimes and mm -hmm. happens but I, I wish that it happens for you because you feel like you have a lot of love to give thank you no I really do and I want eight kids so eight kids girl <laughs> you trying to have a basketball team I do I want a huge <laughs> family I swear like do you, are you do you come or you said it's your mom and your sister why where did mm -hmm. this big family aspirations come from I, I feel like it's because I don't have it so I want it you know like I don't have it and I've never been able to experience it but it's just like Man, I'm not eight kids. Why mm. eight? Not seven, not six, eight. Because, like, I want, like, two sets of triplets and then two sets and then a set of twins. And then maybe, like, one more when I'm, like, 40. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, like, one more when I'm, like, a super milf and then just pop one more out. Like, super the last milf. One. The Super MILF one. mom on the way. <laughs> Monty Jackson's popping out that eighth kid. When's he going to be in the year 20 to be 20 something? 20 something because I need to start soon. You I need to start. So many. <laughs> you heard her private talk. Where can they find you so they can start this process? We need an application process. Yeah, send your application through the gram. <laughs> through the DMs. Slide the right DM with your app and. We'll see. We need to actually create this, you know, thing because there needs to be a lot of important things. If you're gonna have mm -hmm. eight children with this person, they better have a really great job that's yeah. like something that's secure. For They've got sure. investments, something that's not gonna go mm -hmm. away Multiple if the COVID happens. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> they need backup after backup. Eight kids are expensive, girl. Are mm -hmm. you gonna have nannies or you have this yeah, whole for like sure. I have to because I just got my first dog and literally like <laughs> it's 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 not going well. Like I'm like co parenting her with my mom because like I can't <laughs> This so great. I need I need nannies with my babies. So what is your new dog? Welcome to the fur mom. Thank club. you. Yeah. Um, her name is Baby, and she is a toy multi poom. So she Baby has an attitude. It sounds like she just like <laughs> is taking advantage of her name Baby and just <laughs> shitting and peeing all over the crib, and it's not not the so, business. You thought that it was already going to come trained, ready to go? I just didn't know when people said that dogs shouldn't pee all over the place. It was like literal. <laughs> I didn't know it was literal. We well, like, have to train them not to, especially that young because those ones are the most, like you said, if it's mm -hmm. just because it's baby is its name, they're little, like they're little shit. <laughs> literally, like it's crazy. It's literally crazy. It gets better like when they're older. You know what I mean? I yeah. still have behavioral issues with my dog. I call my baby kids. <laughs> Like, How old are they? What kind of They're my babies. Um, I have a French Din and a Puggle. Mm -hmm. 
So a French and French Bulldog Boston Terrier, and he's my troublemaker. His name he's named after Kimbo Slice. He's definitely lives up to his name. <laughs> he bullies people in daycare, but the daycare loves him, so he Aww. gets a free ride sometimes. I even took him to like you know, training camp, which my friend said it was prison. I made him do a Stop. bid, which is not. <laughs> I was one of those moms that turned my dog in. That was me. I mean, you might have to take your dog to school. It's no, important. Think, but my dog was older, too, so he's, like, already stubborn. But doing it really young really matters, especially if you're busy, you're, you know, you're, you're away a lot and things like that from, like, working, traveling and stuff. Yeah. It's hard to take a dog when you're mm-hmm. doing something so tedious. How yeah. long is each process when you do lashes? It's, like, two hours, honestly. Like, either, like, if it's a full set or a fill, it's, like, two hours. In my opinion, I feel like fills take longer than full sets because, like, you have to pick through the lashes that are like hanging off and peeling off and like a full doing set. either somebody else's work or something like fixing no, up. Are yeah. you just I don't really like doing like lashing over other people's work because you know people don't all do it the same. So at that point, you're just going to take it all off because it's not like how you do it. You know, it's not how you do it, girl. Yeah. It's not, it's not <laughs> it's like the Imani not way. <laughs> no, seriously. So you've been in several music videos. Which is your favorite experience that you had? Hard question. You want me to give you this? <laughs> Come on, Imani. I know you have to have a favorite or a favorite memory. Something brings you back to like, what song? What song would that be? Mm. We'll give it to you again. I think you guys some more time. <laughs> so maybe. Don't jam out the song. You gotta think about it. <laughs> maybe like. Honestly, probably the Hillary Banks video I just did with um, Mitch. He's um, signed to I think, Interscope, I believe. Is it already out? It. Yeah, it is out. Okay, what out. is it called so we can go support? It's called Hillary Banks by Mitch. Um, yeah, honestly, it's my favorite video probably because, like, me and him have a lot of history. Like, we're really good friends. And, like, i just known him for a long time. And, like, it was just comfortable being there, you know? Like, video shoots is usually, like, pressure. You usually have to wait around. It's usually just, like not it but like i've been friends with him and i've been around like the 400 team that you know for so it so feels long. like you're hanging out with the homie yeah like, like every other you're mm-hmm. just getting paid for it exactly like it did not feel like work and it was like just us walking around rodeo like driving around like normal shit so it was lit so you talk about you know waiting around on video sets like what is a competition like on set with between ladies at those kinds of sets i mean i don't really see i don't really feel like there's competition well i mean as far as like between the ladies is it animosity towards is it grouped off like high school yeah. is it like you know people like mm-hmm. being catty is it like everyone plays a role is like somebody trying to be a star at all times yeah there's usually like there's usually groups like high school like girls usually like click off and um there's usually always like the group of girls that like they're they think they're too good to dance and too good to do this and that but it's like that's what you came to do like why are you acting like you're too good for it if that what you got paid for you know like if they ask you to twerk like twerk you twerk like that's what you got paid for like what there you- ain't nothing wrong with twerking exactly. i made a lot of dollars on twerking girl it's good Period. <laughs> like nothing's wrong with it so is there ever been like a crazy story that you could tell us that happened like an altercation that you saw you maybe were involved with that you stayed out of um well i wasn't personally involved in it but um i did the Obama video for the baby and blue face. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a party bus scene and like, we were all supposed to like, you know, turn up, like we're on a party bus, you know? And there was this one girl, like, we all were like taking shots and stuff before, you know, trying to get comfortable, whatever. And there was this one girl and um, she was like telling everybody like, y'all need to dance, like y'all need to turn up, like da 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 like hyping everybody up. And then the music started and um, she wasn't dancing. Like, she was like, just, why are you the hype man yeah. that directed everybody? Like, are you the director? Literally, like, <laughs> what did you get hired for? Like, you, that's not your job. Sit so. down, bitch. <laughs> no, literally. So, like, she, like, they were like, stop, stop. Like, baby stopped it. And then, like, they, the directors, like, told everybody to dance. And then, again, she didn't do it. And then he checked her, and he's like, basically, like, you can't be telling everybody to do something. You're not doing shit. Like, you got paid to be here to dance. Like, you need to turn up. Like, da-da-da. And she got in her feelings, like, rolling her eyes, like, whatever, whatever. And then they're like, okay, like, start Bye. again. No, they're, they're, they let her get, they gave her another chance. So they ruled it. And then she stood there. And he's like, get the fuck off the bus. Go talk to, go talk to like, our cast and director. I mean, at that point, off. it's just disrespectful. You're not mm-hmm. the artist. You're not whatever. Even if you felt in your feelings because they called you out and felt mm-hmm. whatever type of way, you still are there to do a job, baby. 
girl. For real. Like, what did you, you didn't come here to tell us what to do. Like, they have the fucking. So did she leave peacefully or was it a hot mess? Um, she throws she, stuff when she left. Did she no. get it in a hot <laughs> <laughs> Nah, she just, she had a little attitude and walked off. She didn't, she probably talked shit under her breath, but it was nothing like crazy. Nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. So I see that you have an OnlyFans. Stop. <laughs> what can we see on your OnlyFans? Stop. Um, <clears throat> honestly. Why do I got to stop, girl? This is private talk. <laughs> We're having a private conversation. You got to tell Miss Texas the I truth. I want the truth. So on my OnlyFans, you're going to just see like tasteful content, like nothing like too, too crazy. Like I'm not like. It's just your sexy pictures that you mm -hmm. put on Instagram that you probably aren't doing anymore. And you're. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, maybe like a little more, but like not like. You're not going to see my nipples. On like my, some like, Maxim profile. Sports Illustrated type of shit. Yeah, like it's hot. You know. What got you into doing an OnlyFans? Um, one of my really good friends, though, foreign, she um, she has one and she like makes a hella bread off of it. And like in the beginning of quarantine, like she was just like talking to me about it. And I was just like. Like, I don't know, we would just always talk about, like, me making one, but I was, like, always so scared because I was just, like, I didn't want, like, to be looked at like that, but I was just, like, it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter. And so I made one, and, like, I made a lot my first month, and I was, like, oh, shit. But I was, like, it's kind of, like, annoying responding to everybody. <laughs> it's annoying just punning to everybody you know like, that's why I mean there's different lanes for everybody I feel like yeah. you know it's it's also perception is everything you mm -hmm. know what I mean like um how you say uh, you don't want to be looked or perceived as anything you're already doing those things on Instagram and doing but just yeah. adding your own spice to mm -hmm. it you know what I mean so it's like girl live your life you're a beautiful no, young woman real. you know feel liberated in, in what you're doing and the content you do it and remember that you don't gotta answer to everybody right away no they gotta wait for her money I try to get back to it but I'd be like having my, my weeks and I'm like not on it. And then I hear other people's stories like, I made like 20 bands this month. I'm like, well, I'm slacking. <laughs> it's definitely a job, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's something, you, you know, just so like consistent. YouTube, but in a different format. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's something that, you know, you have to continuously do content and mm -hmm. continuously give people what they want. I love it though. I like how it's like personal, you know? I like how it's like you can like talk to everybody individually. It's not like... It definitely gives you that interaction with your real fans and people yeah. who aren't like sneaking in the in the shadows and not like mm -hmm. supporting you really in your brand. Mm -hmm. So that's the aspect I like because there's been so many times where you like you don't see you know having a website before mm -hmm. and you don't really get to see that interaction with the one on one fans and actually see who's yeah. paying for you and who's like supporting you, downloading your stuff, you know, supporting all that stuff like that. Yeah, and half of them are, like, not, like they're not all sexual. Like, you know, they, they be asking, like, normal shit. They be asking about my lash business. They be asking, like, normal stuff, too, so. They're, be they're, like, they're like boyfriends. <laughs> That's not the sexual, you know, the flexible yeah. play. No, literally. Like, I'm no I would never meet up with, like, anybody on OnlyFans. I've never. I don't think I don't advise against I advise against that. I'm, I don't think that's safe. But I feel no, like you know it's your boyfriend's that is though. funny. Yeah, that's scary. It's very I feel scary. like you know what I mean. You don't know anything about that that whole section. You know, mm. Don't do that private talk. Don't no, do it. Don't, don't ask the girls to do it. No. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a little bit of a break, and then we're gonna get to my favorite part called Truth with Texas. Do you think Ooh. you're ready for this game, Imani? I don't know. I see you. <laughs> it's gonna get a little hot it's gonna be a little steamy it's gonna, it's gonna be okay though i'll walk you through it mm -hmm. i'll make sure that um you're gonna feel real good at the end of this <laughs> all right <laughs> all right private talk we are back and ready to play truth with texas so we're gonna have four cards each is an ace and each suit is a different type of question okay so pick a card and let us know what it is Ace of clubs. clubs. Ace of clubs. Is cards, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I got you. I got you, girl. I got you. <laughs> it's a kinky question. Mm. Do you think you're kinky? Mm. Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> What's the kinkiest thing you've ever done? Oh. <laughs> um. Truth. Tell us the one you were gonna tell us right now, but you decided against it. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, I just like, 
I like when guys are aggressive with me, you know? So, so you like, like to be choked, hair pulled, mm-hmm. spit in your mouth, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I can see all it that. in your eyes, girl. <laughs> I saw you roll back. You're like, mm, it takes you back. And Stop. I've noticed that you, when you get nervous, you grab your tits a lot. Do I? <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's cute. My nervous know. part is usually like my private parts. Here really? I'm like, I was standing there. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a safe place. <laughs> It's like there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And then you like center yourself back and you're like, all right, we're good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> now you're gonna think about it. You're gonna think about yeah, me every time you say that. See, now I'm memorable. You like that private talk? I got game. Just you see. Okay, kinky. What's the most number of times you've had sex in a day? Like five. Five. I like it. It's a healthy number. Last dirty dream you've ever had. A dirty dream. I don't really, I smoke so much. Like, I don't really do. You smoke your dreams away. I think so, because, like, <laughs> I don't remember the last I believe dream. in that, because I, like, I'm a heavy smoker. Mm-hmm. And, like, honestly, I couldn't tell you the last time I could remember a real dream, because Seriously. I would smoke myself to go to sleep, exactly. because I have anxiety. And so I'd be like, yeah, and I couldn't remember it. And so I, I could feel that. I heard if also when you wake up, if the first thing you do is look at your phone, which we all do, that that makes you forget your dream too. Mm. Like it, it helps you remember if you like lay there and like think about what you were dreaming about. But write it down in a that. book. But who remembers and does all that? Like, like I'm the alarm's to- going off. You're late. Like <laughs> you gotta go. There's <laughs> no time to think about the dream. No. So do you have any fantasies? If you don't dream, mm. you can fantasize that weed smoke will put you in a good fantasy. Like yeah, maybe just like. Like aggressive sex, like like whips and chains will know your name. Oh yeah, I never did all that, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day, <laughs> maybe one day. But um, yeah, like what a great view. I like it. Just what a great view. What a great view. <laughs> <laughs> lingerie or naked? Mm, lingerie, been naked. Mm, so you like to dress up to dress I down? Think it's cute, yeah. I would ask you rough or sensual, but I already know it's rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that one. Thongs or booty shorts? Thongs for sure. Can you give me an example of dirty talk? I, I can't. Like, literally, when guys, like, try to tell me to, like, say stuff to them, like, I hate talking. Like, I hate it. What, well, what do you think of when you think of things sexually? I'll help you out here. We'll, we'll teach you dirty talk. So yeah. when you go to your sexual partner, you're going to be like, Miss Lexus talks told me, bitch. This is what's going <laughs> to Like what? Give me an example. Like, Be like, I want you to put that big fat oh, cock okay. in my <laughs> pussy. Yeah. I, wanna make, like, I want you to pull my hair and make me come all over your dick, daddy. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Emma. Now you try it. Role play. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you can do it. I can feel it. You've had a dick in you, girl. You know what's going on. You know what turned you on. I'm not good at it. But we're going to practice. Practice makes mm-hmm. perfect. I want you to put that big <laughs> dick. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. Don't think about it. I want you to put I cannot. I can't. You got to put. She like, next. <laughs> I want. <laughs> we're gonna work on it i'll work it with you okay. we'll, we'll we'll take some we'll lessons practice. Yeah. i'll practice with you because i feel like i'm just dirty too ta- goofy like. but the thing is is i get it it's something shy you don't really know what to say you think mm-hmm. it sounds funny but the thing is i feel like sex and why i love the show too and these questions it's like communication yeah. communication is really healthy for everything in your relationship and sexually for sure it should be one of the most things that you communicate the most yeah. about and talking verbally if you don't tell your partner either you know either way what you like or don't like they're never going to know. So to enhance the orgasms where you're ready to go and reach, (laughs) Miss Imani, Mm -hmm. we're going to get you there. So I'll give you some practice. Okay. I got you, girl. All right, next (laughs) card. Thank you. It's red hearts. Ace of of hearts. It's a romantic question. Do you think that you're a romantic? I do, yeah. What's the most romantic thing you've ever done for a partner? Hmm. Well... My last boyfriend, um, I actually, like, for his birthday, he's, like, he's a video director, like, a music director, and um, he was out shooting a video literally on his birthday, like, the 
the day that it was like 12 o'clock going to his birthday and <clears throat> he didn't come home until like a five o'clock in the morning but I went back to his, I went to his house and like I decorated the entire thing like with balloons and like <clears throat> all his gifts and like it was crazy and like literally like he cried that's like. sweet <laughs> that's thoughtful mm -hmm. when especially he's not expecting he's going home late and he's mm -hmm. like bam no literally and he was like I've never had anything like this before. Like, da, da, da. And he always brings it up. Well, not anymore, but you know. <laughs> before played out. Before. <laughs> Favorite romantic movie? A secret? I do not watch movies. No, nothing. No. What like, do you do in your spare time? I literally just smoke and watch no or watch YouTube videos like about lashing and like <laughs> watch music videos. But at least I'm, we know you're, you're, you know, all about your passion. That's good. No, literally. You're living, you know, you're building on your craft. You're continuously learning mm -hmm. and learning when you're high is the best thing I feel like. I could be no, biased because I'm a pothead, but. No, because then you just dive deeper into it, you know. What is the deepest thing you've dived into? And I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, damn it. What did I sign myself up for? I got to get out of here. No. Oral sex, sloppy or clean? It's sloppy for sure. Do you ever use sex toys during intercourse? Um, I know, not. I mean, like once, like they, they use it on me. But do you own toys? I do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem like you like them. <laughs> I do. Favorite position? Fucking with a boss. No, just kidding. Hey, baby, <laughs> lower your tone. <laughs> Nah, but honestly, um, probably like when they're on top, you know, because then they have like all the control. So like missionary mm -hmm. over you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been with a female? Um, yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> I want some more of it. All right. Next question. Ace of Diamonds. Ace of Diamonds is a spicy question. Mm. They're all a little spicy. All For little real. Spicy. <laughs> Have you ever used food during intimacy? Mm, no, but I want to. What kind of fruit do you want? Are you going to go shopping? Said, fruit? Fruit? Oh, I thought you said food. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, what kind of food do you no. want, girl? You're like, I want <laughs> some chicken wings, some pizza. <laughs> do you want some sushi on there? What do you Stop. <laughs> no, um... No, I want. I was gonna say whipped cream, but fruit I have. Like I've eaten fruit off a girl before. Mm, what mm -hmm. kind of fruit? Like it was like all kind of fruit. Like it was a whole like fruit platter. Fruit, <laughs> fruit platter. <laughs> Literally. What's where is the most uncomfortable place you've ever had sex? Um, a movie theater. <laughs> that answers my next question. Have you touched yourself in public? Um, no. no. But you've had sex in public. Mm -hmm. Where at? The movie theater. Mm, that's the only place um and then like at the beach and like outside of the car outside of the car <laughs> bent over rough sex spitting on the you rain, that's romantic it was i swear that was probably my favorite time ever like you masturbate to that it's like your spank bank when you're like something really <laughs> needs to go there you're like ah, I remember that, that one, one time, time. <laughs> it's always the one time <laughs> i swear not nah, maybe sometimes <laughs> You're like, yes, but I'm not going to tell you. But yes, <laughs> it really is. Literally. <laughs> what porn turns you on? Um, I don't really watch porn like that, ever. Because you don't watch TV. You're not watching. Like. <laughs> you're not. You're just lashing. <laughs> lash tutorials. No, I mean, if I had to pick, I guess, like. Midget aggressive. porn. No. I was <laughs> <laughs> like, probably, like, hardcore aggressive. like Dom stuff. Like, how aggressive do you like to go? I feel like there's, like, a whole dungeon inside of you that needs to be unlocked. <laughs> no, just, like, thrown around, you know, like, choked. Like you said, hair pulled, splitting, like, all that shit. Like, standing up. I feel like your nipples are hard right now. Talking about it. That's why I'm wearing a thick dress, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let me make sure I got back up. <laughs> hey. mm. <laughs> Most embarrassing sex memory. Um. We're back to the noises. <laughs> oh my gosh. Probably this one time. Oh my gosh. Like, tell us. I kind of started like having sex a little early. So, like, I was in high school and, um, yeah, I was dating this boy and we both ditched school. And, um, yeah, he drove and 
<clears throat> he picked me up, went back to his house, and um, yeah, we were like hooking up, and his mom came home, and like, I we heard someone coming in the door, and I ran in the closet, like, <clears throat> butt ass naked, and I was like sitting on the ground, like, like literally like in a ball like this, and fucking in the closet, in the closet, butt ass naked, and she came in the room, and she like see my shoes or something, cause she knew someone was here. She's like. Who fuck is here who the fuck is in my house and literally like i don't know she just had a feeling she bust up the closet door and <laughs> where I was, else could she be literally and i was sitting there in a ball like naked i just look up and she's like get the fuck up get the fuck up get the fuck out of my house that is screaming and i'm just like ah! <laughs> were you more embarrassed that you were naked or that you had to run out of probably no because I, I was naked like she didn't like make me leave right then and there like he had to take me home like i think it was before like uber was even doesn't that suck when you're like you get in trouble but he that person has to take you home no literally <laughs> literally but that was definitely probably the most embarrassing but that sounds like you know it's scare you straight did you go back to his house and fuck again i did and i got <laughs> caught again <laughs> you did not learn your lesson <laughs> i didn't we got caught like two more times at the crib like it was bad but i never got caught by my mom so hey at least good, we have right? that <laughs> right here's the last card i love it Okay, this is the ace of spades. There we go. That's the spades, girl. That's our favorite here at Private Talk. It's Yay. the naughty question. Ooh. Told you they're Wonder all well it was less. <laughs> I feel like you're a naughty girl, but you don't have naughty dreams, but you do naughty things. Is that right? Hey. <laughs> What's your biggest turn on? Like when a guy's like just touching you, like before, like anything, like if you guys are like just like, like just like in line and he's like grabbing your hips like you know like just touching you or like so you respond to more like intimate touching mm -hmm. i love that like any like that's probably why it happened in the movie theater <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you like where did I he love touch it. you that i was like oh it's on probably my hips and shit like right here is like probably a weakness hips don't lie and then like kissing me on my neck and shit those are the those are like the mm -hmm. gonna happen yeah gonna go down yeah and he's here you go off. and if you have cologne yeah it's it's there and off and cologne <laughs> oh <laughs> You know what's kidding. going down with the monitor. <laughs> Better have that smell good. That walk by. You know, like, hygiene is so important. I agree with that. I'm big on, so like, important. I mean, pheromones is a big thing. Just having that, like, you know, inner, you know, energy that, like, you know, connection with that <clears throat> smells and everything is just like, a good man smells. It can really make your panties wet, too. No, seriously. Like, guys don't know. Like, you can even be ugly and have good hygiene and smell good, and you would probably still pull bitches. You feel me? I feel that that's correct in some places. I mean, senses are everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just have to make up for it. You can't have it all. Sometimes you got to pick which one's going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Body part that you're most proud of. <clears throat> On my mm -hmm. Um, Probably, like, my hips and my butt because I've been working on it. <laughs> what you do to work it out, girl? You know, Twerk eating. out, work out? <laughs> yeah, you know, eating, working out, like, different shit. I like it. Okay, last question. Last time you had sex with your ex. Oh, I'm going to get him in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I want the truth. <laughs> nah, um, I don't know, probably like a month ago, honestly. About a month ago, <laughs> you heard it, private talk. You're freaky. I like it. Hey, sometimes you, I feel like it's COVID times. You know, mm -hmm. you got to go back. You're single. I mean, do what you got to do, girl. Go back with people you've been with and just... Because it's like, it, it's not like increasing numbers, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you're, you're safe. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? How do you so freaky? <laughs> How am I so freaky? <laughs> yeah. I was born that I way, you know what I mean? Teach some classes. <laughs> I mean, I should teach some classes. That's why I'm trying to educate <laughs> private talk out yeah. there. But I'm, you know, I've always just been a sexual being, like as far as like comfortable in my own skin. I was like the girl that was friends with all the guys and I would show them how I wanted to see, I asked them to show me their dicks so I would tell them how to Turk, take a bra off with one hand. So oh, it was like shit. trade, trading, trading things, okay. you know what I mean? Like Damn. knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. I've always been about educating and helping <laughs> others out. I didn't want anything to do with any of them sexually, but it was mm -hmm. just like, you were curious at that age. Like yeah. you were in high school, I think. Yeah, I think so. Probably, you know, <laughs> sorry friends out there, but you know, um, but yeah. And then I did porn <clears throat> when I turned 20 or from 21 to um, like when my 30s oh wow and um how'd you like it 
I loved it. I, you know, I had a really great career. I did a lot of fun things. I learned a lot about my body, a lot of about my femininity, um, how to express myself and feel comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things, you know, especially, you know, with media being crazy and getting ridiculed on certain things or whatever, just having tough skin and staying true to myself throughout the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then now, you know, the process of starting the podcast and giving, a, you know, my voice to be heard and just kind of like have my own platform to kind of meet new people and just kind of see where this all takes me. But it's been a really fun ride. I've got to meet a lot of, you know, fun people. And yeah, every time I feel like it gets better and better. Yeah, that's dope. So I appreciate <laughs> you taking the time, Imani, and coming on. Let us know where we can find you on your social media so we can support your business and um, follow you. Yes, you can find me at Lush Lash LA and for my lash page and Imani Jackson for my Instagram. And also Lush Lash LA is my website as well. So Awesome. You heard that private talk. Make sure that you go and follow her and support her. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time. Yes, thank you. And guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Gang, gang, gang. <laughs>